Now, what are the clinical pointers towards a specific IEM? All these clinical po pointers are very important. Lot of MCQs are asked in need super speciality from these clinical pointers. So, first is cherry red spot. What are the conditions in which cherry red spot are seen? There are three conditions that you should remember. Cherry red spot is seen in Tay-Sachs disease, it is seen in Neiman pick disease and it is seen in GM1 gangliosidosis. See, there is a long list of conditions associated with cherry red spot, but these three are the important ones which are mentioned in standard books and which are asked in exams. So, what is a cherry red spot? Cherry red spot looks something like this. As you can see, there is a cherry red spot being present on fundus examination. This is the typical cherry red spot. Then you have coarse fishes. Coarse fishes, look at this picture. This is the typical representation of a child having coarse fishes. So, coarse fishes, coarse facial features can be seen in conditions like mucopolysaccharidosis as well as GM1 gangliosidosis. In addition, you can remember that condition known as pompous disease which is nothing but glycogen storage disease type 2 can also have coarse species. If, so, if MCQ asks you what is the condition, what is the glycogen storage disease which shows coarse species, the answer will be pompous disease that is type 2 GST. Moving towards uh, cataract, cataract can be seen in two conditions, galactosemias as well as Wilson's disease. Galactosemia will show the presence of oil drop cataract whereas Wilson disease will show the presence of sunflower cataract. And then we have skin rash or eczema and alopecia. Skin rash, eczema or alopecia that is dermatological manifestations are particularly seen with multiple carboxylase deficiency and a related disorder known as biotinidase deficiency. I have mentioned them separately because they are mentioned separately sometimes in MCQs, different options they are asked. So these are the clinical pointers regarding the skin rash. And finally, we have hypopigmentation. Hypopigmentation may be a feature of tyrosine metabolic defects, which includes phenylketonuria and albinism. Albinism has its own multiple varieties. It may be oculocutaneous albinism or only ocular albinism, or it may be associated with other syndromes like hermansky pudlak syndrome, as we will see in the subsequent modules. Now, uh, clinical pointers, this is something new, something important in AIMS protocol 2019, it was added, it was not there in the older protocols. So, renomegaly is a feature of von Gierke's disease as well as Zellweger syndrome. So, what are the conditions in which abnormally increased size of kidneys are seen on ultrasound? One is von Gierke disease and second is Zellweger syndrome which is a peroxisomal disorder. Then we have retinitis pigmentosa which is a feature of mitochondrial defects. Old MCQ. Let us look at an old MCQ which was asked. The question was asked in a slightly different way. The question was cardiomyopathy is a feature of which IEM? It was not asked in this form. The, the way it was asked was cardiomyopathy can be seen in the following inborn error of metabolism except. So, you should know what are the conditions in which IEM is seen. So, we are not taking it in a MCQ form. We are taking it in a uh, discussion form. So, remember that three IEMs are associated with cardiomyopathy. One is the popular one which you already know that is pompous disease, that is glycogen storage disease type 2, in bracket you can write GSD type 2. Secondly, it can be seen in fatty acid oxidation defects. And third, it can be seen in mitochondrial electron transport chain defects. Mitochondrial electron transport chain defects. So, these are the three points which are important and they have been asked in one of the older MCQ in exam. Now, moving over to the abnormal urine odors. Abnormal urine odors, uh, if you have a look at the Central Institute Super Speciality exams, the Central Institutes have a peculiar tendency to put questions on abnormal urine odors. Questions on these have also been asked in need super speciality. So, what are the abnormal urine odors? The important ones that you should remember. First is mousy odor, which is a feature of phenylketonuria. So, mousy odor, also known as musty odor, is a feature of, of phenylketonuria. 
it is also written as musty odor. Second is your rancid odor, which is a feature of tyrosinemia. Rancid is uh, uh, what should I call it? a spoiled butter. If you uh, keep the butter for uh, the expiry date of, of freshly made butter is uh, if you keep it refrigerated for around 7 days, 10 days. If you add preservatives, it's about a month or so. But if you keep a butter for one year and you take it out from the fridge and you try to smell it, the type of smell which will come out is the is the smell you find in urine of tyrosinemia patients. Then you have cabbage-like odor which is seen in methionine defects. You have tomcat urine odor which is seen in multiple carboxylase deficiency. You have sweaty feet odor which is seen in isovaleric acidemias. And you have fruity or sweet smell which is due to ketones. Now ketone, ketogenesis is commonly seen in diabetic ketoacidosis, starvation and vomiting. And finally, we have maple syrup urine odor which is seen in maple syrup urine disease. So these abnormal urine odors are very important. The key word for each and the underlying condition are useful clues you may even get in clinical MCQs.